Hi everyone, this is Itlali with Mexican Excellence. And today, unfortunately, I have another video, a commentary on what is happening to our people, the street vendors of Los Angeles. And let me just, you know, preface this by letting you know that I was born and raised in Los Angeles. And unfortunately, a lot of these things have happened, right? And not just you know, uh, black youth attack, uh, attacking our community as street vendors, but also our own people attacking street vendors, right? So we need to put that out there because it's really easy to fall into the whole black and brown are in, at issue with each other and conflict with each other. So it's important to understand that this unfortunately happens to the most marginalized groups of our population. It's something that is being done for fun. But now with social media, it goes on to this whole other level, right? Of exposure, of making fun, of humiliating our people. And so, you know, it's very painful to see these videos. It's very, and I think a lot of us who are Mexican and Central American, it really, it feels personal because a lot of our parents, a lot of us um, had to do that, right? A lot of us, have family members that are street vendors, or maybe you are a street vendor yourself. So the fact that we watch constant videos of our people being attacked and assaulted, it's very sad and it hits us in a way that's personal and it's very sad, right? And it's very upsetting. So on the whole vein of being upset and the way that we are reacting to it, let me first tell you that we have the right to be upset. Like this is very upsetting. It's very sad. It's, it's, it's something that, you know, having to already deal with the lack of resources in our community because of the pandemics. And that's obviously being highlighted with everything that's happening. And then stepping back and seeing how within our communities that are already, you know, suffering from the inequities of not of institutional racism, environmental racism, uh, financial racism on top of that we're getting now into our own communities and it hurts because that's our communities right we're pre predominantly black and brown communities that are you know institutionally impoverished and are being hit big time with what's happening in the pandemics a lot of our people have lost their jobs a lot of our people um, have had to work as essential workers without hazard pay so Beyond all that, right, everything that's happening with inequity, it's highlighting just how, how messed up and corrupt these systems are. On top of all that, on our social media, we're seeing our people being attacked. And, you know, I, myself personally, you know, I had to take a few days, right, because first, the one that we know about is the Lotera lady, right, that happened early, um, late March. But then before that, there's been other attacks, right? And then uh, in 2017, a personal friend of mine was uh, attacked by the Paris Police Department in the city of Paris for selling flowers at a graduation ceremony. And so, you know, so just to kind of highlight our people that our street vendors are seen as, you know, not having rights, being vulnerable, um, not being able to protect themselves or fight back, because of many times their legal status, but that is kind of socialized. That's what people think like, oh, well, they can't do nothing, so we're gonna do whatever we want. Oh, they can't defend themselves because we're gonna do whatever we want. And so that mentality is still there, right? As we can see. But what I wanted to talk about in this particular video is highlight and kind of show what is being exposed here. And most importantly, you know, as, as angry as we are, as, as upset as we are, and I see this because I, I have an Instagram page, I have a Facebook page, and so you can see, you can monitor, right, the comments and the reactions. And let me just tell you that, yeah, we have the right to be upset. All of us have the right to be upset. Like I said, it's very personal because that's our community, and we're already endangering our lives. We're trying to hustle. We're trying to make money, trying to end, make ends meet. And a lot of us are vendors, a lot of our family members are vendors, or maybe we were vendors, right? And so we react to this at a personal level, at an angry level, at an emotional level, because it hurts, because it's our people. But then I start seeing comments 
that are anti-black, right? They start using the N-word. They start using the M-word. They start using all type of destructive anti-black sentiments. And it's really upsetting because at, when this is happening, like people that I didn't even know were like that or think that way, next thing you know, they're posting that and they're using that language. And so to me, as an activist, as a historian, right? I'm in my little world and I'm like, what the heck? Like, I'm not naive. I know the the tensions. I know that type of lingo. I, I know, like I said, I grew up in LA, but it hurts because I understand the anger, but then right away, a lot of us resort to that pre-existing racism, the pre-existing anti-blackness that we were raised with and that we've normalized. And I wanna call attention to that because it's not right. Yeah, we have the right to be upset. Yes, we have the right to voice out, but at the same time, we don't have the right to, to say anti-black remarks or anti-blackness remarks. We don't have the right to disrespect and degrade a whole entire group of people because these idiots decided to have a field day with our people, right? And again, I understand, I understand the anger. I'm upset as well, but you know, we cannot use this to justify the, the fallacies, the way that we already think because of these systems, right? And, and I be, I'll be honest, like, yeah, I understand the anti-Black sentiments. I grew up, you know, and my family, we moved all over the place, right? But to this day, I, have, I still have family in Compton, in Watts, in Long Beach. Um, I grew up in those neighborhoods, so we understand that, right? But then to see it now, like I said, on the whole level of social media and the ridicule, and then seeing how my brown community, Mexican Central American community is reacting, it really hurts, right? It really hurts. So I wanted to talk about that. And, you know, lastly, I also want to talk about how, you know, in these type of moments, as far, like I said, I, 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 above the pandemics, above all this, I really, really appreciate, like I've talked about before, how our people quickly, you know, our communities are quickly looking to, to mend things, are quickly trying to repair things, right? Like, for example, with the Lotera Lady, Swifty Blue, um, Urban Kings, Memo, um, Black Sikin, they all came together, found her, right? They helped her, you know, monetarily. There was a, a GoFundMe page created. And then unfortunately, right, what happened with the man that was selling mascaras in, in South LA too, where he was egged. And right away, people moved to, to try to help repair that damage. And then unfortunately, this what happened yesterday. Um, this man, this was his second day of selling raspados, right? That's uh, iced, I don't know how you say it, like, it's basically shaved ice with, you know, different flavoring for people that don't know what a raspado is. It was his second day, right? And these two guys go up to him, get some raspados, and then one of them slaps him. And it's all captured on film. They post it, and I think it's funny. They have, like, little smiley faces all over. And that moment when you watch these things, you feel that pain because that looks like my uncle, right? That could be my uncle, that could be my dad, that can be, so it's personal. But what I want you to understand is like, a lot of us, because we relate to that, and I'm so happy to see how people are taking action right away. Like for example, today, Jimmy from Rancho Milde, he was able to find him, right? And he interviewed him on his Instagram live this morning at 1045 and told him, you know, I'm giving you $5,000, please stay home. We don't know, these kids are young and dumb and we don't know what else they wanna do. So let me just give you this money. Let me, let me support you this way. Uh, a GoFundMe page has been started. I will share the link on this video. And you know, the Jimmy uh, from Rancho Milde, he's an entrepreneur, right, from our community. He's, uh, he's Mexican from LA and he's interviewing him and you know, he starts crying because it's, it's intense, it's very emotional, right? Like you're talking to the man that we just saw on film be attacked and sharing, you know, that it, it reminded him of his dad. And it's intense, it's emotional, but at the same time, I really appreciate, and it made me feel so good to see, you know, Jimmy and other people, right, right away trying to find ways to help him, find ways to, 
to repair, right? I mean, financially, what has been done, the psychological trauma of that, the psychological repercussions of, of being attacked as you're trying to provide for your family, that's different, right? No, no money is ever going to repair that. No, that healing is, is, is unique and different for everybody. And we don't know how, how deep those, those wounds are going to go. But the fact that, you know, uh, Jimmy from Rancho Milde came through and he gave that support, it opened the avenue for a bunch of other people to help and support him, right? And a lot of people I know, somebody probably made a comment like, oh, you know, that's too much money or why, like, are we trying to support him now? And it's like, like he said, like Jimmy said, it's a, why not bless him? Like, let's, let's bless him however we can. Like, what's wrong with us trying to financially help if people can you know and there's a lot of people in our community that have that type of money if you can help out someone make it to the next month the next i don't know few months why not right and i think that's it's a beautiful thing to see for the community to take action and right away try to repair this try to show solidarity and this is for everyone right this is not just mexicans helping mexicans a lot of people are coming together are coming together to do this but what i wanted to talk about is showing the different layers uh, that are being exposed the layers of anti-blackness in our communities the layers of how through social media even though we're in quarantine you know i am so excited and impressed with the way that we're able to quickly maneuver quickly through social media find ways to connect and still bring justice as best we can still bring some type of support to our people and that's something that should be celebrated and that's something that should be honored and acknowledged because we're all going through our pain right now right we're all suffering um in whatever way financially emotionally uh some people spiritually there's just so much going on right now that unfortunately these attacks are contributing to that that anxiety and that instability and especially to our people that are hustling like, like i said this pandemic is hitting us financially and hard in a lot of places right and it's unforeseen and so our people that are trying to do the best they can this is happening but at the same time what i gather from this yeah it could become sour and bitter and be like oh you know fuck this and this and this not like that could be an option to take but I challenge you to us for, to be constructive. And again, I'm not saying for us to minimize our anger. I'm not saying for us to ignore that anger. I'm saying for us to convert that anger. Let's transform it into something constructive, like we're doing right, helping him out, reaching out, continuing our work, continuing our efforts for black and brown unity and calling out the anti-blackness in our community. And like I've said, I hope that a lot of us, this is exposing a lot of things, is exposing a lot of the ugly in our community, but at the same time, it's also letting us know the good things in our community, how we're healing, how we're trying to come together, and how we're really trying to help repair these attacks. And you know, I wanted to come out here and share this because it impacts, right? It really feels personal to us because we relate so much to to the street vendors because that's our people because that could be me or that is your uncle or that is your tia and it's real right and i think at this point especially i wanted to offer that perspective because i'm being very realistic right about what i'm seeing on social media how people are engaging with this information with these videos but it's important to me to i honor right our righteous anger i honor it but i do not i, I do not support the anti-black sentiments that are coming up from this the black racism that's going against the black community and what i get a lot a lot of people you know dm me and message me saying well they don't they don't care about my people well that's just the way i was raised well that's just the way it is and to me i'm like you know what we're grown right if that's the way we were raised if those are the the anxieties that we were raised with because a lot of us were raised with those tensions right in the black and brown community unfortunately the older generation not all of them but most of them 
were we were raised with that fear, right? The fear of the black community or the black community was raised with uh, looking at the brown community as, as exploiters and leeches. And there's so much, right? There's so much. And so I challenge our generation to really combat that with positivity and really try to find ways to make this an educational moment for all of us because a lot of us are parents, a lot of us are educators and our kids are watching how we act and how we react to this. So I, I really challenge you, especially for our people, right, that are watching this. Kids are bombarded with this, right? Not just us as adults, but teenagers, kids from the little second, third grade, right? They're already bombarded with all of these videos. And so we have to understand that social media is planting, you know, certain ideas into our kids, into ourselves. So we have to combat that. And that's why I use pl um, platforms like this to combat that narrative of destruction, that narrative of racism, the narrative of, oh, nobody cares, whatever. Well, let me just share this perspective with you. I do care about my community. I was born and raised in LA. And you don't have to be born and raised in LA to care about this because we know that this happens throughout, right? But I wanted to share that because I love my community. I love my people. And I also love the efforts that we're doing as a black and brown community to come together. And I want you to know that yes, our anger is righteous. Our anger is, you know, we, are, we have the right to feel that but let's not keep promoting the anti-blackness in our sentiments and in our pain and as we react to these attacks. And you know, for the street vendor, Jacobo, that this happened, eh, Señor, estamos con usted. Eh, yo sé que ha sido algo muy doloroso para usted, para su familia. Todos nos ha afectado la, la pandemia del COVID-19 muy feo, muy económicamente en ciertos casos. Y usted solamente estaba tratando de hacer lo que usted pudiera hacer para su familia. Y eso es algo con mucha dignidad y con mucho honor. Y yo le quiero dejar saber que yo uso esta plataforma para, para demostrar apoyo a nuestra comunidad mexicana, a nuestra comunidad centroamericana, pero más importante, a enseñarles que estamos uniéndonos y que no, no sufra esto en, en, en solo, que usted no está solo. Ya hablo con usted, Jimmy de Rancho Humilde, ya tiene la página de, para recaudar fondos. Todo eso es para demostrarle que no está solo. Así que, por favor, sé que pasó algo muy feo, pero por favor, nunca se sienta solo. Sepa que estamos aquí para usted, para, para protegerlo, para defenderlo en las capacidades que nosotros tengamos. Así que, with that, I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I have the GoFundMe page under this page. Please support, promote it, and let's look out for each other. Like I said, this is an opportunity for us to have these conversations. It may not be comfortable to some people, but this is the only way we're going to change these ideologies and these attitudes and these you know, animosities that we have is to promote and be unapologetic in us healing and us recovering and in us establishing our solidarity with our communities. So Sitlali from Mexican Excellence, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and see you next time.